Hey Key Hive, welcome back to my channel. So it is day three of the graduate school series. Thanks so much for clicking on this video because I know you're interested in what I have to talk about today. So if you haven't done so already, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me to become a part of the Key Hive. And hello to all of my newest subscribers. Thank you so much for joining the Key Hive. And let's get right into today's video. So if you haven't already seen the last two videos I've done for the series already, go ahead and check those out and then come back to this video. We've already talked about the differences between undergrad and graduate school. We talked about five things you need to know before you get a degree. Now we're gonna be talking about five things to expect from a marriage and family therapy program. So if you're interested, keep on watching. So now we're gonna be getting in more into marriage and family therapy because that is the program I just went through. Just graduated in July, so I have all this fresh perspective on marriage and family therapy, the program I went to. I'm gonna talk all about that in this video. Just a little bit of background. Marriage and family therapy, the best way I can explain it is that as a marriage and family therapist, we don't just look at the individual, we look at the individual and then all of the systems surrounding the individual. So we look at family, family interactions, and family communication with each other, church, school, and how all of those systems influence you as a person, influence your decision making, your thought process, because everything that has happened throughout your life has influenced you as a person. So when you come in to see a marriage family therapist, You'll get them asking a lot of questions about what happened you know, in your past, how do you interact with your dad, how do you interact with your parents or your grandparents or anything like that. And all of that is to help us formulate an idea of what has contributed to the problem. And then we kind of go through a series of sessions to kind of help unpack the problem, get to the heart of the matter, and then take that and then magnify it and work, work it out with you give you some tools, help you kind of see different paths that you can take. And then most times in a few weeks to a few months, client seems to be good and either like the relationship with the therapist ends or they sometimes have a new situation that may come up and then we work through that as well. That's pretty much how I can explain marriage family therapy in layman's terms so I don't confuse anybody. So pretty much what we do in a very 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 small nutshell there's more to it but that's the simplest way i can explain it so now that we got that little synopsis out the way i'm gonna talk about what to expect from a marriage family therapy program so i'm gonna be referencing Vadosta state university because that's where i went for my program i loved Vadosta state but i really loved family works clinic if you're in Vadosta or in that area go to family works clinic get some therapy from the clinicians there they're all the master students and you know we've been trained by the best professors you know in the marriage family therapy field so if you're in need of some therapy or just know somebody who was looking for therapy in the area send them there you know you won't regret it all right so i'm going to be referencing Boston state in their program in the hopes that either if you want to try going there you know let them know that you know you watch my video here we go the first thing to expect from an mft program is the way you will think will change forever now when i went to the program i was thinking linearly what that means is so say somebody hit me and i'm like okay somebody hit me because they're mad at me that's cause and effect. They were mad at me, so they hit me. I was thinking like that before the program. After the program, somebody hit me, and now I'm thinking, okay, what caused them to hit me? What things happened throughout their day that led up to that point? Was there something that happened in their life where they think that it's okay to have that type of violence towards a person? What experiences have shaped them to react in that way? way if you hear the types of questions i'm asking it's all about the experiences the different systems around them that is how i now think all the time it doesn't matter if i'm dating somebody and i'm upset with them i don't get upset 
like right away like dang he not texting me because he you know he's being selfish or whatever he just whatever think like that anymore i'm like okay he not texting me just either there's something going on i try to look at different perspectives to kind of help me understand what might possibly be going on i mean the way i ask questions is different the way i think is different the way i do things is different the way i communicate it's all different i'm a lot more understanding of people and their situations i'm a lot more understanding of how people react during certain things if they get kind of hostile i don't take it personal because i know that i didn't do anything and it's just something that's going on in their life that might be causing them to react in that way so thinking will change so number two along with thinking i've learned how to communicate more effectively now so you will learn how to communicate more effectively because as a therapist you do a lot of listening but you also do a lot of talking you want to be sure that when you have a client that you're really communicating very very clear because you don't want to leave any room for confusion so if you leave room for confusion that can steer the whole session off into another path and you don't want that so you have to be very very clear in your communication in your questioning in your response to the client you have to be very like on point everything is very fast paced sometimes so that effective communication has also spilled over into my friendships and other relationships now um if somebody asked me what's wrong i will tell them directly what is wrong i don't want them to have to guess what's wrong with me i'm just gonna tell you what's bothering me so we can kind of get past this problem whereas i used to be if somebody asked me oh what's wrong i'd be like nothing okay sure but like, yeah and then they walk away and you're like i just find it funny how ladies we all have done it we've all done it but now that i've been through this program i'm more confident in voicing how i go about i just know the right things to say and i have to attribute that to this program because all the courses that i went through really helped me understand how important communication is communication is so important like that is just that is the foundation of any relationship i definitely learned how to communicate more effectively right so number three so this has, this has more to do with the program. So in the program, you are supposed to get 500 client contact hours. So the first year of my program was all classwork. So I was in class all the time, you know, reading papers, all that good stuff from August through July. And I had summer classes. During my second year, which was 2016, 2017, you have classes internship and you have clients you have to see at the clinic we had a clinic called family works it's a student run clinic and we as the graduate students see clients from the community who come into our clinic to get seen for therapy so during the year we have to get 500 client contact hours and they're broken down into individual relational family group supervision that's it if i remember correctly any of my cohort members watch this let me know if i missed anything in the comment section so in each category you have to get a certain amount of hours and they all have to total up to 500. you can take those 500 with you when you lead a program in order to get those post supervision licensure but i'll be talking about that in another video in order to get these 500 hours we have to see our clients and usually getting clients was really really tough because at the clinic we provided services based on the sliding fee scale based on your income would determine how much you pay for a session most our sessions were free and we didn't get any of that money all the money went to the clinic we were just getting the experience and working with clients through you know helping helping them get to that better place so getting getting those hours were hard because most times clients would call the clinic and they would set up an appointment you get assigned a therapist and then then the therapist they get assigned to has to call the client introduce themselves at the first appointment 
and everything like that, right? So they come to when the client told to show up for the first session and sometimes the client went show, we would call them back and then we answer the phone, we leave a message and that happened often or we have clients who would come for like one or two sessions then you call them again and they don't answer the phone, they just kind of start ignoring you, they just go ghost. Clients go ghost on you. You have clients who come in for one session and think everything's cured and then they go on about their way and hear from them again. That happened a lot. So really getting those hours. The way I got most of my hours was through co-therapists. I had some of the best co-therapists out there. Hey y'all. Um, super important to click with certain people or work with people or just be nice because when it comes down to it, you're going to need those hours. So when you click with people and you buy with people in a good way, you're more likely to get those co-therapists. And you're going to need that because that's how I got a lot of my clients. So yeah, getting those hours are really, really tough. I remember my first semester of my second year when I was seeing clients, you need 500 hours by July. And it was maybe December and I only had about 90 hours. And I started in August. So <laughs> yeah, I was freaking out Came come January cause you know, I only had like six, seven months to get 400 more hours and I didn't know how in the world I was gonna get that. So getting the hours was definitely tough, definitely tough, but co-therapists are there to save the day. Also internships, uh, number four is practicum. So what practicum is, is a seven hour class. Yes, seven hours. But also state we had from 12 to seven or three to 10 p.m. So during this time you have, there's two rooms. One room is a therapy room. The other room is the room where all the therapists and my supervisor would sit. There were six therapists and a supervisor. We would sit in the room. We would see into the therapy room from the observation room. And I thought that was the coolest thing about the entire program. Just because when I went to visit, that's what I got to see. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. I get to see people doing therapy. And it was, I thought that was a really, really great experience. Just because when I was... You know, seeing clients there were things that I couldn't notice because I was in the zone I was in my therapist zone helping the client get them to that better place and my co-therapist can see things that I couldn't see or hear things that I couldn't hear because I was so focused on the client what was going on at the time and I thought it was super helpful because we would take breaks in between sessions and kind of go back to the team and discuss what was going on, what we were thinking, any questions that the team have that they wanted us to ask our client. It really, really helped and I really, really missed that aspect of it just because having a group of therapists who kind of all think like you but also have different their own perspectives. They helped give me different ideas about cases. They were all in different, different areas and different cities and states. It's kind of hard but I still can call them anytime to ask them for help on certain clients and things like that. So practicum was definitely a interesting, interesting time because we you know we would have fun, we would we would laugh, we would bring a lot of snacks because that's seven hours. Seven hours. And I have to admit sometimes I did fall asleep because it was dark back there. It was dark and it was warm. Those are the two things I need to go to sleep. And I did get um, a point off of my evaluation because I was falling asleep. But it was, a, it was so rough. I was so tired. <laughs> All right. So number five. So the last thing to expect from an MFT program is that you will inspire people, motivate people, and change lives. I think the first time I realized that I knew I was in the right place was when I had a client tell me that I really helped them change their life. They felt that they can really conquer anything. They thought that we were the some of the best therapists that we that they ever had, and some of them had never ever been to therapy before. But the fact that we changed their perception of therapy altogether and they changed into a more positive experience was probably the most heartwarming thing ever because it just really let me know that i'm actually doing something great for somebody else and that is probably the best thing when clients just tell you that you know you're doing a great job or you really helped me out or thank you just for listening to me because nobody wants to listen to me it's just a really great thing to 
be a part of and for me to be a part of that change in their life or for them to say they're never gonna forget me I'm just like I'm so glad I had that great impression on your life oh, so touching oh I'm gonna give you a bonus one so the last thing to expect from a MFT program is that it is a lot of work you're going to be mentally drained sometimes you're going to be you're going to probably fall asleep on the couch with a bag of potato chips in your hand and wake up at nine o'clock in the morning and realize that you never even took off your shoes that happened to me i was so exhausted because of all the sessions i was having and all of the different issues that my clients were having it was just so emotionally taxing sometimes and i would take that home so it is this is a rough field you have to learn how to take care of yourself self-care is super super important because you're dealing with people's minds and their problems and different things that have been going on live and some some of the stuff is really really rough and just having a program and professors and cohort members that you can just go and vent to and cry and just have somebody who understands how you feel it's just it was really good just because there were times I I could not get through a session um, because sometimes I had my own things going on. I was just too emotional to even go through a session. So I had to have my co-therapist take over the session and I would just be a silent co-therapist sometimes. I mean, just having the cohort, I know I talk about them a lot, but they really have had a huge impact on my life and I'll be forever grateful for all 35 or 36 of them that I went through the program with. So yeah, those are five things to expect from an MFT program, more specifically about off the state's MFT program. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have learned something so far from these first three days. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for day four. Don't forget to subscribe. All right.